My name is Stephen Noak. Let me start by sharing my story with you. I have experienced near-death situations. When I was four years old, I was getting ready to go to the mall with my parents, who lived across the street. I was playing with my brother in a neighbor's driveway. I was riding a low-slung plastic tricycle called a big wheel. My brother said, Hey, we're going to the mall, as he crossed the street. Back then, the mall was like our own little Disneyland. I darted down the driveway, using the gap between the two parked cars as my advantage. At that same moment, there was another car coming. As I climbed up between the parked cars, the oncoming one slammed into me. I ended up pinned under the car with my big wheel weaged under the back tire. I was squashed beneath the big wheel, but I did not get run over by it. What I remember of that encounter changed my life forever. First thing that strikes me is how colorless everything is, like I'm watching a blank screen gradually get lighter. Then it opened again, and I saw my reflection, eyeballs rolling and everything. The screen went blank again, and then came back on while I was leaning against someone. I realized that this had to be a human because I could feel their presence so strongly. I opened my eyes and saw the floor beneath the figure's long silvery white hair and the bottom of their robe. The thing had a completely white face when I turned to face it. I had a magnetic draw toward their face, and we spoke without words, but we understood each other. I got closer to this lunous thing, and it was like opening up into another realm. I could see right away that this was a peaceful planet, devoid of animosity and pain. Though I couldn't exactly put my finger on why, I was itching to go. Looking back, I believe that was heaven. I could sense that something was going on outside of my body. The creature told me that although my time was not yet over, they will be back. I'm not sure I really understood the why or what of our chat, as the most of what we discussed has since been irreversibly obliterated from my memory. After our conversation, the thing comforted me by telling me to put your head down, Stephen. Nothing will go wrong. I did that, and a few days later, I woke up with toys in my possession. Let's continue till approximately the age of 33. I could feel my former experience influencing me while I drove recklessly, but I was unable to clearly access those memories. I skidded around a bend, slammed into a telephone pole, and before I knew it, I was doing around 70 miles per hour. During the crash, I lost consciousness and had to have surgery on my arm at the hospital. A wave of peace, calm, and security passed over me right as I was about to get up and go. I was frightened. This reassuring feeling started in my head and traveled all the way to my toes. I immediately felt comfortable. When I lay down once more, the same creature spoke with me. It was hard to remember that previous experience, but I recognized the voice from my four-year-old self. All the memories returned upon hearing the voice again. Stephen, bring your head down, the object commanded. Nothing will go wrong at all. As the apparition talked, something in my thinking shifted. After my four-year-old near-death experience, everything we had discussed about energy and quantum physics began to make sense. I had the background information that I did not have when I was four years old. Therefore, I was able to understand it now. The entity told me that the field it displayed to me resembled a blueprint and that it was the creation blueprint. While we were in the quantum field, I learned that all living things have a blueprint in this field for mental and physical recovery. This original blueprint, which I came to understand as love, was there, like a file on a computer. Later on, I realized that I was inside something that looked like a wagon or medicine wheel. There was love in the center. The entity showed me how to transmit our energy out into the world so that we could see it. They made it possible for me to experience reality by showing me the routes that branch out from my center and travel all the way to the wheel's edge. The outer ring functioned as a screen, displaying everything I had done up to that point. By bringing back these pieces of our soul, ascension, also known as soul retrieval, allows us to heal and reunite with our true selves. The entity gave me a brief overview of the nervous system. According to him, our subconscious minds function like a hard drive that holds all of our programming, whilst our conscious minds are like an operating system. This includes trauma programs that cause us to behave differently to particular situations, as well as things like where I left my car keys or how to ride a bike. These insights were critical to my recovery, and I gradually began to act upon them. We also discussed entanglement, 
quantum mechanics, and the possibility of influencing someone else's energy field across long distances in class. People close to me were surprised since I hadn't done any official research on the topic. When I went back to work as the store manager at GameStop, I saw an elderly woman fall to the ground, which was rather upsetting. I had been prepared for this by my studies in entanglement and quantum physics, but this was my first opportunity to apply it. I laid my palm on her back, and she looked at me, comforting me, saying, I'm all warm. I felt comfortable, even though we were only there for a short while. I thought to myself when I got back to work, that was really weird. People came to get her. I couldn't help but feel a rush of intense energy as I thought about it. It was like the excitement of opening presents on Christmas Eve, except a thousand times more intense. I followed this energy to a number of churches in the hopes of making friends and gaining some insight. I learned from this trip that instead of looking for God outside of myself, I should have looked within. I obviously did not discover God in church. That's when psychic encounters started. I began to notice lighter and darker shapes all around me. Once the voices in my head started talking to me, I was helpless to stop them. Every time they talked, it felt like someone was putting pressure on my head's sides. Since I had never dealt with anything like, I was first afraid. I had terrible sleep for days. I discovered later that these entities were responsible for transmitting my identification into the united field. All life forms are linked and one in the same field. Unlike our reality, where everything is made of atoms vibrating at different frequencies, we were all one in this space. The realization that all those photos were only digital copies of me began to set in. The reason some of the spirits were cruel to me as a child was because I didn't take care of myself. They mirrored a lot of my own negative, self-deprecating thoughts. I decided to change my energy after recognizing I had to let rid of these negative aspects of my personality. I started combining different energies in an attempt to alter my mental state. It was a turning point. Through activities and surroundings, I reconnected with my inner child and began taking control of my life. Reopening my constricted neurological system was imperative. I needed to replenish the energy I had expended on the field. As I worked on this, people started coming to me for healing for various difficulties, including the exorcism of evil spirits. For me, a sizable portion of the riddle had been solved. Later, while I sat with the light being, an angel, or what I came to know as an Elohim, told me about creation and the sacredness of everything. Two things I've learned along the way are that we are all connected and that how we treat one another is a mirror of our inner values. They cannot be separated. Throughout my near-death encounter, I felt profoundly connected to everything. It struck me like a ton of bricks that there is no distinction between any religion and that all religions are essentially the same, with various people giving them different definitions.